It is time for the three-way tag match. The Hot Shots defending their gauntlet spot against the following up-and-comers. They have to defend their gauntlet spot. They decide. Well, apparently they decided There's to. ten teams in this gauntlet. Yeah. But and you must defend your gauntlet spot. Well, they volunteered. They had one because extra team. Because they're fucking stupid. I agree. So the four up-and-comers, we have the team of Derek Wilde and Jimmy Rave. And the other team, a Chicago duo, the hate breed, apparently, of a steel. And yes, C.M. Punk. I hacked my way through all of that. Yes. Unbelievable. Yeah, I mean, he left AEW and went right to this show. He, he I cannot <laughs> avoid this man. He, he left AEW, got, grabbed himself Orlando Jordan's time machine, went back to 2002 and joined TNA. Let me tell you something. Mm. What a match. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, uh, is it Cassidy Riley? Uh, yeah, he's one of them, yes. He was not bad. Okay. And uh, and Ace Steel looked great. Ace Steel was very good in this match. Ace Steel was great in this match. Yeah. And then we had old CM Punk. God bless the guy. It was impossible. Here's the thing, Benny. Yeah. I know people are going to listen to this and say, well, you know, Brian has heat or some shit with CM Punk. But I would bet you anything that if you interviewed CM Punk, he would say the exact same thing I'm about to say right now, which is yeah. this guy was like, he had four left feet in this match. <laughs> like, Well, you're right. Everything he did, he fell down on or he <laughs> slipped. Or, like, it was amazing to watch. Like, he came a long way. Oh, yeah. I realize that's like an underhanded compliment. But, boy, did he come a long way from this appearance here in, uh, TNA. in TNA. My God. Surprised he didn't blow out his knees on one spot. That guy went up to do a bounce off the top ropes. He was supposed to land on his feet. Yeah. He landed on both his knees. Yeah. And immediately jumped back up. It's and then he did like a uh, he did like an inside out sent onto the floor. Yeah. And fucking crashed on the goddamn fucking cement. I didn't think he was gonna get up. I thought his career was over. There was a line when I remember very early in the <laughs> very early in this match where Don West said C M Punk was a name to watch in the X Division. I literally laughed out loud because outside of a really ugly springboard clothesline he does once in a while. Uh, he's not really an X Division guy, but goddamn, he comes out here. He does. He gets into the ring by doing like the buckshot lariat flip, and he's doing all these flips and dives, and that's sent on to the floor to a guy lying down on the floor. Oh yeah, he was an X Division wrestler here, a bad one. Well, he was attempting to be an X Division <laughs> wrestler, here, a really but... really bad one. But Holy it's... smokes! He he looked different. He was skinnier. He still had the stringy hair. He had very few tattoos, relatively speaking. And those horrible, horrible basketball shorts. Yeah. That was a terrible look. What did what did Don West say or, or Tanae? One of the announcers said something like, uh, he's the one in the long baggy tights. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, brother, those aren't long baggy tights. Those are gigantic basketball shorts. Yes. So in uh, CM Punk's defense here, Dave said about this match in 2002 that people who have seen Punk in action remarked how they thought all night that somebody had invaded his body. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go then. Wow. It's not just us. So, I mean, we were focused on Punk for obvious reasons, but this match actually was a Hot Shots showcase, if you can even imagine such a thing. And, I can. I saw it. Yeah. And uh, there's bodies flying everywhere, and CM Punk is doing... He he did a springboard missile drop kick to the knee, and I honestly don't know if he was aiming for the knee or the head. I, I did not know what was happening there, but it was a horror. And this wild fellow who I know nothing about, but he tried to dive at one point and nobody caught him. And finally, Ace, who was great in this match, he grabs one of the hot shots and basically does a widow's peak. And gets the one in seven minutes. Now here's something we haven't even talked about yet. So there's three teams here uh, uh, fighting for a spot in the gauntlet. I, I misspoke when I said the, the hot shots were defending their spot. The losing team in this match is out of the gauntlet. The other two teams both advance. Which begs the question, and Don West did ask this, why would you even tag in? Well, that's a great question. You have nothing to gain by winning. Just stand in for the entire time. Man, this Ace Steel, I watched this match and I thought, why didn't this guy, why wasn't he a bigger star? Like, he was around. He did all sorts he of things. Ring of Honor and stuff, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I watched this guy and he was like, he had a good physique, he yeah. had a good look. Yeah. He worked He worked rings around everybody in this match. Granted, he had the most experience. I think he was like 91 or something he broke in or whatever, but 
He was really, really good in this match. Goldilocks interviews Chris Harris and James Storm. James Storm had a line in here saying about how uh, Howdy Doody has wooden balls. What? That's what he said. But I guarantee you, Howdy Doody's balls are not nearly as wooden as Chris Harris's promo in this segment. Jerry Borash brings out Scott Hall and Six Pack. He called him. It, it went back and forth between Six and Six Pack here, but uh, he's in TNA now. And uh, Hall talks about the one, two, three kid and Razor Ramon. You're one of the guys that makes you love pro wrestling. As long as I'm teaming with you, don't tell the boss, but I'll work for free. And Six takes the mic, and he looks great. He's jacked. He's shredded. looks in great shape. All the bad shit you've heard about us is true, he says, but we do love pro wrestling. Uh, I'm not in sports entertainment anymore. I broke in 15 years ago as a pro wrestler. That's what I am now. Before we get fired from this place, let's kick some ass. And then Brian Lee and uh, Ron Harris attack, but they end up getting their asses kicked and they eat uh, both guys' finishers. So there you go. Goldie interviews Brian Lawler. This is the one where they're talking about April. No one seems to know who she was, including Goldie. And finally, she asks him, shouldn't you be worried about your match tonight? He says, what match? She says, the tag team gauntlet. He says, the gauntlet is tonight? And he screams at her like it's her fault. And storms off. I'm sure this made his partner, whoever that was, happy. Hermie Sadler is back. They're yammering on. NWA TNA is going to sponsor his car on October 12th. Yay. This leads to Bruce coming out and cutting a promo, or trying to, but Hermie's talking right over him. Uh, he's calling out fans. The crowd's chanting for Athena, which they do every show. And I, we haven't mentioned this, I don't think. But it's funny because, of course, there's an Athena now who is not the Athena they're chanting for. And I'm trying to remember what Athena there was on, like, the indies in 2002. Athena is the ring girl. It's her job to take the ring yes. gear and stuff. That's who they want to fight. So Bruce is calling people out forever. It goes on forever and ever. He finally picks a woman who I believe was conceived, born, and raised into adulthood in the time he was in the ring cutting this promo. And uh, so it's Bruce versus a woman. Don is saying, man, we should be doing real matches in this show. Bruce wins with a powerbomb in a minute and continues to beat her up until Hermie saves. <sighs> Goldilocks interviews Jerry Lynn, who is, God bless the guy, outstanding wrestler, and I've, everything I've ever heard is he's the nicest guy in the world. This was a very bad promo. It's stiff and wooden and uncharismatic. Finally, Truth shows up to, shave the, to save the day. Maybe save the day, too. I don't know. He interrupts, interrupts this honky talk, promises no flip-flop flying around. You'll have to commit a homicide to take this belt from me. All right, finally, we're at the gauntlet match. A bunch of shit happened. Everyone was confused all the time. This fucking... <laughs> Do you remember at one time we watched that Chikara gauntlet match, and I got really, really angry? There was like 50 guys in it, because it just kept going. <laughs> you know, I, didn't, I didn't realize how long it was. They're yes. like, hey, you know, you should watch this match. I'm like, all right, I don't mind watching a Chikara match. Turned out to be some fucking three-hour gauntlet or something like that. I was so mad at the end. And I felt bad afterwards, but, you know, I was mad. Hmm. But this fucking match, it just goes on and on and on. And they got the most ghetto fucking clock in the bottom of the screen. It's like, I had a Tandy in, like, 1985 that had way better graphics than this uh, 10, 9, 8. And they just keep calling these nerds in. And uh, and it fucking goes on and on. I'll cut to the chase here. They fucking go on and on forever. Dudes get eliminated, more dudes come in. Dudes get eliminated, more dudes come in. Blah, 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 blah. Finally, it comes down to, if I recall correctly, America's Most Wanted. And, uh, and uh, you know, Don Harris or Ron Harris or whichever one. And Fake Undertaker, right? Uh... That's what it comes down to. Well, the last four of the Battle Royal, the, the, the final tag the actual match, match. The actual match, yes. It's Brian okay. Lee and Ron Harris versus Chris all Harris. All right, so after all that, yeah. after this fucking eight-hour fucking gauntlet, it comes down to Ron Harris and that other guy. Brian Lee. Brian Lee against America's Most Wanted, yeah. as they are to be called. And so they do this match, and uh, Harris or whoever gets sent outside with Lee or whoever. And then Ron tries some shit or something, and the cowboy... The detail here is amazing. ...rolls him up. Well, this is the point. The cowboy fucking cradles him for a flash pin. Yeah. Slides out there the new tag team champions. And I'm like, 
So you did a, a gauntlet qualifier followed by an excruciatingly long gauntlet leading to two final men who were then reunited with their partners to do a tag team championship match for the vacant NWA World Tag Team Champions Championships. And after all that, your finish is one of the fuckers slips on a banana peel and the other guy flash pins him and runs for his life. Yeah. I sat through all of that for that? 28 minutes. Fuck you. Whoever booked that, and I think I know who it might have been, mm. a hearty fuck you. What a goddamn fucking waste of time. And what a shitty way to get over your new champions. I'll say. They lucked their asses into a flash pin after all that. There was no no part God. of me. No part of me when that was done thought, that's the best team in the world right there. No. <laughs> you thought these nerds lucked out yeah. twice. One of them was about to be thrown through a table. And uh, the other one pinned him. Yeah. So let's see. I mean, I did not hate this as much as you did. I found it more... I didn't hate it. Like, the wrestling was... Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I don't need to watch okay wrestling for fucking six hours. It just kept fucking going. I'm calling it down Granny's memory lane. Are you oh. reading from your memoirs? Yes. No, no, okay. no. That's past. Oh, okay. <laughs> this is new That's, stuff. This is more up to date. You know, I'm I see. Okay. This is the more recent stuff. Yeah, new old stuff. I just. No, said. no, okay. no, no. <laughs> the New <laughs> Testament. Everyone let her go. We lived on a farm 10 miles east of Baker. More yeah. recent, you say? <laughs> I was going to say, this isn't new, no, this is old. It's old. Okay. Okay. Who said new? I didn't say new. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, we're just going to be quiet. And you, am I out of my you, mind? No, yes, we're all out of our minds. <laughs> now I'm upset. <laughs> no, stop. <laughs> I'll, I, I'm fining Vinny. Vinny, you're being fined $100. No. It was Martell's and Heaps. Heaps? <laughs> the Heaps. The Heaps. And the Heaps only had one daughter named Alice. Yeah. What's so funny about the name? The Heaps? The daughter Alice, uh, she knew how to yodel, and she was what, what she'd call nowadays a rebel. The yodeling rebel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Granny, if I may interrupt, what did they call her back then? Alice. Okay. <laughs> you thought I wasn't going to like this segment, Granny? This is the best segment we've had on the show in years. Hey, guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the Join button, and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show, all of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click Join today and don't miss out.